Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be 10 things that you can do to simplify your life and take back a little bit of peace and calm into your life. So correct me if I'm wrong you guys, but this world is kind of crazy. You need to uncrazify your life. I myself have had to uncrazify my life. I have had to develop new habits and break old habits in order to create a little bit more calm and simplicity in my everyday routine. Just make my life a little bit more uncomplicated because the more complicated your life is and the less simple your life is, the more stress that you have. This is why I'm such a huge advocate of decluttering, minimalism, getting rid of things. Life is already stressful and hard let alone the way things have been lately in the world with the cost of rent and food and everything else and the economy and all the political stuff going on and all of the stuff in the news. Um, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on, not to mention your own life, the busyness of your own life and how much you have on your plate. And all of us deal with stress to some extent. We all have different demands, whether it's our job, our children, rising costs of living or other things that are causing us stress so without too much further ado you guys let's get into these 10 tips to simplify your life and reduce your stress okay so the first thing is to take something off your plate quit something stop doing something so quitting something doesn't mean that you are a quitter it just means that you value your time enough to take back some of it for yourself so if you're part of two or three groups outside of your work and your family put one of them on the back burner or back out completely. This doesn't mean that you're a failure or that there's something wrong with you. People might think something or they might make a judgment or they might sit there and chit chat about how you left the group or how you're not doing that anymore, but that's their problem, not yours. It's not your job to please everybody else. It's your job to manage your sanity and your time. No one will judge you for quitting your church group or stopping your paint class or putting that class you're taking at the university on the back burner. Nobody is going to judge you for doing those things there's nothing wrong with backing out of a commitment and there's nothing wrong with deciding hey this thing is taking up too much of my time and energy i do not have the time for this anymore if every saturday or sunday or monday night rolls around whatever it is and you've got this thing that you're always doing and it's taking up a lot of time every time it comes around you just don't feel like doing it or you're starting to notice that you would much rather have had that time for yourself then take that time back for yourself quit that thing if you have been accepting a lot of overtime or if you have been working two or three jobs give one of them up if you can financially do that take back that time for yourself remember that money is very relative and money is something that you can always make more of but you can never get time back the second thing is to cancel plans so you don't have to attend every party every dinner or every event that you are invited to it's okay to cancel plans if you have something planned this kind of goes back to taking something off your plate but it's okay to do that. You don't have to, you know, go for coffee all the time. You don't have to go to that wedding that, you know, it's a person that you barely know or you're just an extended part of the family. This is going to sound terrible, but make something up. It's okay for you to say, hey, you know, I'm not going to be able to make it. XYZ thing is happening. And then just take that weekend for yourself. People are really good at putting way too much stress on their plates. I have seen it so many times with friends and family who are always complaining and always feeling burnt out and saying that they don't have enough time for themselves and they just would really love some time off or they're just so tired they're so exhausted and yet these people are constantly making work for themselves they are committing to travel plans they're committing to events i know that family is a little bit iffier it's a little bit harder to get out of those plans or to simplify those plans but sometimes you have to you guys sometimes you have to for your mental health and my family is not super close like my extended family we don't we don't get together for a lot of holidays anymore it's more or less just like close family and honestly i'm okay with that because i can't imagine the stress of constantly having to travel and meet a large group of people many of whom don't even get along in another place driving on bad road conditions, spending a ton of money, and then coming back completely exhausted. So number two is to cancel plans. And even if it's something very simple, say for example, you're having a really stressful week and this Saturday you told somebody you would meet them for a shopping and coffee trip. Cancel early and just say, hey, I'm so sorry, can we please reschedule? 
and they don't even need to know why. And it's okay to tell a little white lie. We feel a little bit guilty when we do that, but it's okay to say, you know, something came up or you can even just call it what it is and just say, you know, I'm super tired. I just need a day to recuperate. Do you mind if we reschedule? And if you think it's going to be a friend or family member who isn't going to take that very well and is going to be upset with you, then give them something that they're okay with. Say, I've got an appointment or I had to pick up an extra shift at work or something to that effect. So number two is cancel plans. Number three is to not answer your messages. And I'm talking about text messages, DMs, Facebook messages, emails, whatever. You do not have to respond to every DM that you get, every text, every phone call. I will often flat out just ignore people these days if I don't have the time or the energy to get back to them. I used to be such a people pleaser. And every time I would have a inbox full of messages or a whole bunch of text messages or people that I hardly even know writing me and asking me questions or asking me how I've been. I used to be such a people pleaser and I felt like, oh, I don't want to leave these people hanging. I better respond and I better give them a really nice, well thought out response. I don't just want to give them a one word answer. And so I would put so much time and energy. And when I look back, I'm like, wait a second, why was I spending all that time doing that? I do not owe anybody anything. I do not feel guilty these days, you guys, about just flat out ignoring a phone call or flat out just not responding to a text message or seeing a message pop up in my DM and just leaving it on red because I know that that might be considered a little bit rude, but time is valuable, man. And sometimes you have three messages. Sometimes you have 30 messages. What are you supposed to do? Just give all your time as people demand it. It's almost as if people can tell that you are around and they just want to take all your time from you. And this especially happens with people who are bored or don't have a lot going on in their own lives. I've noticed people who don't have a lot going on and don't realize how busy you are, it's almost as if they just want to suck every last second out of you. You do not have to answer every phone call and you do not have to answer every message. It is okay to be unreachable. It is okay to be hard to reach. And in today's world where people love chit chat, where people love entertainment, where people love gossip, where people are busy not being busy, um, where you are busy building a life and doing things that are important to you and you are putting your time and effort into projects that are meaningful for you. In this world where a lot of people are busy doing nothing, it's very, very easy for them to sidetrack you. It's very easy to get sidetracked and pulled into other directions. You have to stay laser focused. If you want to have the life that makes you happy, you have to stay in your lane. You have to sometimes be untouchable. And it also creates a little bit more desire on behalf of other people when they realize that, hey, this person is not just available every time I reach out to them. This person has boundaries, this person has a life, and this person takes time for themselves. It's actually something that's very respectable. Number four is to turn off notifications. So this pretty much goes back to number three, but basically do yourself a favor and put your phone on do not disturb. Turn down your ringer so that you can't hear every time your phone goes off. Turn off your notifications on Facebook if you have Facebook, Instagram, anything on your phone that gives you a notification, whether it's your calendar, your email, your time of the month app, um, shipping, I don't know, new deals on Sephora, something like that, your text messages, anything that is giving you a notification, turn those notifications off, get rid of those little red badges. They are such a distraction. They've done studies that have shown that red is a color that most gets our attention, and that is why they use red for the notification pop-ups on your cell phone. Red is a very attention-grabbing, alarming sort of color, and it does something to your brain. It grabs your attention. And so when you turn your phone on and you see all these red notifications popping up all over the place, first of all, it's kind of alarming. It's also a little startling because you kind of look at it and you're like, whoa, oh my gosh, look at all this stuff. Your next inclination, of course, is to go through all of them and check all of them because that's what we do when we see notifications. We want to get rid of that little red pop-up. Such a time waster. It takes so much of your energy. It pulls you away from your life. It pulls you away from reality. I don't have any notifications set on my phone at all except for text messages because that way I can see if a friend or family member is trying to get a hold of me, but I keep my circle super small, so it's usually only like two people. It is amazing how much more peace you feel when you look at your phone and you don't have 50,000 notifications telling you to check this email, check that message, somebody tried calling you, there's a new sale here, your shipping notification for something you ordered, like 
it's all mental clutter. You are feeding your brain all of this information, all of this mental clutter. It's no wonder we get exhausted. Your phone can be a wonderful tool, but it can also be a tool for destroying your well being and your mental health. So make it work for you and turn off your notifications. Number five is to outsource a job. So is there a possibility that a family member, for example, can take your kids to soccer practice? Another example might be if you are a single parent and maybe your child lives at home with you full time, is there a way that their other parent can handle one aspect of their life? Like maybe the other parent handles all of their sports tournaments or the other parent handles all of their orthodontist appointments or something like that. Is there a way that you can outsource something in your life? Maybe you have a dog and your dog is very high energy and you walk it twice a day. Is there a way you can hire a dog walker to do one of those jobs for you? If you get your nails done and paint your nails at home, maybe you can get somebody else to do your nails for you. Pay someone else to paint your nails for you. If you have the financial means, can you hire someone to come in once a week and clean your house? If you have daycare, can you bring your child to daycare for a day and just take that day for yourself? Don't feel guilty about it. Just take the day for yourself. Yes, daycares are meant to be used as a place where your kids go when you work, but I think that every mother would be lying if they said they didn't take a little bit of time during the day to do something for themselves on a day when their kid was at daycare. Outsource a job. See if there's something in your life that you can get someone else to do for you. Hire someone to come and clear the snow from your driveway. If you've been cleaning your car yourself, why don't you go and take it and get it detailed? Little things like this that you think are not necessary expenditures because you can do it yourself can actually save your sanity. I know this firsthand because I'm the type of person who wants to be in control of everything and I'm the type of person who feels like I can do this myself, I can do it all by myself, I don't need any help and then I take on so much and I get very burnt out and very overwhelmed. So number five is to outsource a job. Number six is very, very similar, but it is to delegate tasks. And this is more like inside your own home. So ask your kids to do chores. I feel like chores these days are something that have kind of fallen by the wayside. I feel like kids don't do chores as much anymore. But for example, if you have a child who is old enough, teach them to wash the dishes and make that their job. Tell them that every single day, after school or every single day at whatever time they have to do the dishes or if your spouse is offering to do something for you and usually you don't need them to or want them to let them do it for you the odd time they want to do it they want to do it because they want to help you so delegate tasks inside your house if you can Number seven is to clean your house. I've spoken about this before as a way to reduce stress and save your sanity and uncomplicate your life. And some people think it sounds counterintuitive. Like how is cleaning my house making me less stressed (laughs) because cleaning is work and cleaning takes time. But honestly, getting your house in tip top shape can really reduce your stress because it is immediately gratifying. And when you look around your house and everything is clean, it makes you feel so good. So cleaning the house is something I stay on top of. I have certain jobs that I do every single day and I have certain things that I do every couple of days. For example, I wipe down all of the countertops every single day. Um, I always make sure the dishes are done before we go to bed. I never leave a whole bunch of dirty dishes sitting on the counter or in the sink for a long period of time. I just get them done. I vacuum almost every single day because we have a dog and a cat and I have a cordless vacuum. I just give it a quick once over, especially in the nooks and crannies where hair likes to accumulate. Having these little rituals in your life and these little habits is what's actually going to simplify your life. It makes you feel so much better, not to mention it is therapeutic and it actually helps to de-stress you because you're focusing in the moment on something that you're doing. Put on a YouTube video in the background, put on something to listen to and just go to town cleaning. After you're done, you will feel so much better. My daughter and I have a rule that when I work a 12 hour shift, when I come home from work, the house better be clean and the dishes better be done. So she's 13 years old. She can handle that. And it's not too much to ask. I've been gone all day. You can definitely do your dishes after you've made something to eat. You can definitely make sure that your shoes are not lying all over the floor. It is something we have implemented that has made a huge difference because I can cannot handle the stress of a really busy, crazy day at work. And then I come home to a sink full of dishes and a living room full of God knows what. (laughs) The next thing is to go around and do an angry declutter. Maybe don't be angry, but have you ever run around and angrily cleaned your house? Like you've been so stressed out that you ran around and cleaned the house in a fury 
And then when you were done, you felt so much better. So it's kind of the same thing for me. Sometimes if I'm feeling super stressed or I'm annoyed with something, or I just had a really bad conversation or my daughter and I had a little skiff about something and I'm feeling really frustrated, I will run around and I will just declutter. Or if I'm really annoyed with the situation, I will grab a bag and I will literally go around and just be like, okay, what is garbage? Like what has been sitting here? Or I'll go to the fridge and I'll clean out the fridge and I'll just go around and I'll just get rid of stuff or make a whole box of donations. And I'll be like, okay, I'm getting rid of this. And I just like go around literally room to room, cupboard to cupboard, closet, linen, clothing. And I just start chucking stuff. Sometimes you have to do that. Take your stress and channel it into a direction that is going to be beneficial for you. Nine times out of 10, that's either cleaning your house or decluttering your house. Keeping your area clean and clutter free makes you feel so much more at peace, so much more calm, and definitely simplifies and uncomplicates your life because now you have less stuff to look at, less stuff to store, less stuff to clean, less stuff to maintain, and less visual clutter basically seeping into your eyes every time you walk into a room. The next thing is to let yourself have a do nothing day. So I'm really bad for this. I'm really bad for just taking a day and sitting around and doing nothing. Um, I have a very type A go-getter personality. I always feel like I need to be doing something. I really have a hard time just taking an hour or two and sitting there and putting my feet up and doing nothing. It rarely, rarely happens. And I think partly it's good because I am very productive that way. Like I always get a lot of things done and I like growing and building things. I'm very creative. If I didn't have this type of personality, I don't know if I would have been able to have a YouTube channel or do all this other stuff that I do in addition to working and being a mom and all of this kind of stuff. Um, so I think that you know, not being the type of person who can relax results in you being super efficient and super productive, but that comes with a price that comes with sometimes not having time for yourself and also burning out. It is okay to just have a day where you do nothing. Even if it's a day where your kids are at school and you feel like I should really be doing something. I should really be getting this project done. I should really be whatever, whatever these things that you keep shooting on yourself, it's okay to just take a day and do absolutely nothing. Um, let yourself have a nothing day. Let yourself have a nothing day where you don't have anything on your list. Take the day and just don't do it and don't feel bad about it either. It is not going to be the end of the world. And the final thing, and it's kind of related to the last one, is to take pressure off of yourself. So you do not have to look perfect every single day. I used to be the type of person, maybe this comes with age, I don't know, but I used to be the type of person who could never be seen without makeup on. I couldn't be seen without my hair done. These days, I don't mind, especially in the wintertime when it's super cold outside. I'm sorry, but my priority in the wintertime is to be warm. And so if I just throw my hair back in a claw clip and I throw on my Lululemon leggings and my Ugg boots and my really warm winter jacket and I wear that to go get groceries, I really don't care. It, as long as I put my best foot forward a couple days a week and I put effort in a couple days a week so that I can feel good about myself and I can still feel pretty and I can still feel put together, as long as I do that here and there, that's enough. I don't have to be perfect every single day. I can have days where my hair is just like not styled and I just put oils in my hair or leave-in conditioner in my hair and I just let it sit like that. I can have days where I wear nothing but a whole bunch of sunscreen, which is what I do most of the time. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. It's okay if you have a day where you don't get out of your pajamas. It's okay if you have a day where you, like I said, don't do too much in the day. Don't get a whole lot done. Take the pressure off of yourself. So you guys, these are all things that I have been implementing over the last couple years. I've really tried to take back my time. I've realized that it's okay to have a mental health day and it's okay to use your sick time as well. Like those of us who have sick time at work, a lot of us feel guilty for using sick time. But the thing that you have to remember is that at your job, you are replaceable. You are dispensable at your job. If anything was to happen to you, nobody, I mean, people might talk about it for a bit, but after a while, they're going to forget about you and they're going to replace you with somebody else. You need to prioritize your life because this is your life and you are replaceable at work, but you are not replaceable at home. And so I used to feel really guilty. I used to, like I said, be that people pleaser. I thought that I was doing myself a favor or really other people a favor. And I thought I was doing some wonderful, like courageous thing by always being there for everybody else and always doing what everybody else thought was right. And um, picking up extra shifts and answering every text message and going out with people and 
doing all these things because everybody else wanted me to do them, answering intrusive questions, invasive questions that were nobody's business. Um, you know, you need to learn how to be assertive. You need to learn how to have boundaries and how to take back things for yourself. And you also, you know, there's, there's a lot to be said for just like living a slow life. Think about the relationships you have too. Like I've had friends before who were very, very needy sort of in terms of they wanted to talk every single day for long periods of time. Or for example, if I wouldn't get back to their Instagram message right away, or I wouldn't get back to their text message, they would be upset with me and they would say, oh, well, I thought you didn't really want to talk. You know, um, I just sensed that you didn't want to talk anymore because you weren't getting back to me and stuff. And I was like, actually, no, it's just that I don't have the time to talk 24 seven. Like, I'm not going to give that to you. Um, it's always just important to remember that we make our lives very, very busy. We make our lives complicated, as complicated as they have to be. See if you can find ways to uncomplicate your life. What are you doing? What are you purchasing? Where are you putting your time? Who are you talking to? What plans are you making? What questions are you answering? How many projects are you doing right now? How many jobs are you working? How many classes are you taking? How are you complicating your life? One of the best things I could say to you is if you're not sure and if you're super stressed, sit down and make yourself a list of where all of your time goes, who you talk to, who you hang out with, what kind of events you go to. Make a list of all this stuff and then start putting little ticks beside everything and put what you can do. Is it something you can quit? Is it something you can delegate? Is it something you don't have to do? Is it something you can stop? Is it something you can put off until later? Is it something, is it a person that, you know, you don't even really like talking to all that much. Is it somebody who you don't have to be talking to? Do you really need to be going out every Friday and Saturday night with that group of people? Or could you be using that time to sleep or go to the gym? What parts of your life are making your life more stressful? I have a pretty, I don't want to say it's stress-free because it's not stress-free. I think I'm just good at managing stress, but I have a pretty simple life. <laughs> Hence the name of my channel. I have a pretty simple life and it's because I have learned over the years how to get rid of the clutter and get rid of the noise. And I'm not just talking about clutter in my home. I'm talking about noise in my life, people, obligations, and you know stuff that I'm a part of. I've gotten really good at crossing things off my list and making my life much more simple. The beautiful part about getting rid of clutter and noise in your life and getting rid of obligations and getting rid of people, getting rid of toxic people, getting rid of not even just toxic people, but obligations in general, text messages, DMs, all this stuff. The beautiful part about getting rid of all that stuff and your notifications is that you make room for what does matter. That is the whole premise behind minimalism and simplicity. It's not about having fewer things. It's about having better things. And so hopefully today's video was helpful for you guys. I hope that it gave you some insight or some clarity, or maybe it was something you needed to hear. Maybe you've been dealing with something in your life that has been stressing you out. And this video just helped it click for you and be like, you know what? I don't actually have to do this thing. I'm not actually going to do this thing. <laughs> and when those people give you grief, write me over on Instagram and tell me about it. And I will sit there and give you a high five because good for you for taking your time back. So thanks so much for being here with me today, you guys. Um, and that's everything. I'll see you all very soon in my next video.